Hey guys, we're going to continue the sugya that we left off with. Yom Tov Shechal Yot Motzei Shabbat. Yom Tov that falls on Motzei Shabbat. We saw that there's a whole bunch of brachot we have to make, right? We have to make Kiddush. Uh, we have to make Ner. We have to make Brebir Gafen. We have to make Chavdala. We have to make Shechianu, right? And we saw there's a whole bunch of possibilities of what order to say them in. Ten way machloket as to why. You guys went through the whole Gemara, scanned it all, great job there, right? We have all these opinions, all these different orders, all these different permeations of Yayin, Kiddush, Ner, Havdala, Shechianu. So that we follow Rava, says Yak Nahaz, right? Yayin, Kiddush, Ner, Havdala, and Zman. The question we're gonna deal with today is why? Why do they have this machloket? What are they arguing about? What do they disagree about? What exactly are they arguing about in terms of the order? Why do they have these orders? The Gemara is going to back them up. The Rashim is going to back one as well. We're going to look at two. We're going to look at Rav and Shmuel. These two in depth. So why do they say this specific? And we're going to focus on one main point. So before we get started, I want you to take down some of these key terms for the Gemara part. And help us to read it. A mushal is a parable, right? A metaphor. We're not going to give a, a specific logical argument. We're going to compare it to something else totally unrelated to Kiddush and Havdalah, but plugging in these as the characters, so to speak, in the mushal. You'll see that in a second. We think about Melech, I don't think you need to write that down, is a king, but Iporkos is a governor. A governor is like second in command. The Melech was in charge of the whole area. The Porcos was in charge of a smaller section, right? When the Melech had to leave for something, the Porcos would take in and he would be in charge of that area at the time. Niklas means entered, and Melavin means escort, out. So we're going to see that one's going to enter and one's going to leave. Yotzim likrot means go out to greet them. So we're going to see that people would go out to greet one coming in. We're going to see those in the mushal now. Before we do that, though, we're going to look at the Gemara here. Rav and Shmuel. Gufa, right? We talked about Ein Osin Mitzvot Chavilot Chavilot. We shouldn't be saying the same things on more than one bracha on one cup. I said that there's a difference between Tre Mila and Mila Achat. Remember that it was one thing that it's Berchat Hamazon and Kiddush. Those are two different things, or Havdalah. Those are two different things. And then there's Kiddush and Havdalah, which are pretty similar. We're going to see that they're not quite as similar as you made them out to be. Oh, we're going to look now. Gufa, Yom Tov Shechal Yot Acha Shabbat. When Yom Tov falls out after Shabbat, Rav Amar Yachna, Yayin, Kiddush, Ner, and Havdala. With Shmuel Omar, Yayin, Ner, Havdala, Kiddush. And Hak. Right? If you take a look at the sheet, you're going to notice something. The same first bracha is yayin for both of them. That's not a machloket here. What is a machloket, you're going to notice, is kiddush comes in opposite spots. Rav says kiddush comes first after yayin, and Shmuel says it comes last after yayin. And if you think about it, ner and havdalah are really part of havdalah. When we make havdalah, we say bere pergafen, bere me name is samim, bere me are and Havdalah, the bracha, Mavdil ben Kodesh l'chol. These two are a unit. So they're really arguing right now, which comes first, Kiddush or Havdalah? Which one should be first? Is Kiddush first, and then the Havdalah set afterwards? Or is Havdalah first, and then Kiddush afterwards? We're going to see that the real machloket here is this point. Which should come first, Kiddush or Havdalah? We're going to take a look at Shmuel first, and he's going to give a mashal. So let's look at the Gemara here. I'm a Rabbi Hanina. Mashal to Rabbi Yoshua ben Hanina. He's explaining a sheet later in the Gemara, but it applies to Shmuel, so we're going to use it here. It's a mashal la melech. It's a mashal to a king, right? Or queen. Shiyotze. They're leaving. This is called a motorcade. Anytime a royal person would leave, somewhere, they would have a big group, like a parade, escorting them away. That's a very old practice. This is even in the times of the Gemara they did that. This is more recent in England. But whenever the king would leave, or the queen would leave, Melchamalcha, they would have a whole big parade. 
the Iporkos Niknas, the governor's coming in. It's not that the Iporkos is not important, it's that not as important as the Melech. So what do you do when this happens? Malalvin et HaMelech, you escort the king away for Achachach, then Yotzim Likrot Iporkos. You escort the king or the queen, you have this whole big parade for them, and then you go out and you greet the incoming Iporkos, the governor. Now, what's this mashal? In the mashal, Shabbat is the Melech, and Yom Tov is the Iporkos. Shabbat is the holiest day of the year. We don't always think about it that way, because it comes every week, but the truth is Shabbat is the holiest day of the year. It's more holy than the Yom in Tovim. It's more holy than Yom Kippur. It's more holy than all these other days. It's the holiest day of the year. It just happens every week. Shabbat, Shabbat Malkata, Shabbat Queen, and the Porkos is like Yom Tov. So when we have Shabbat ending and Yom Tov starting, right, we are Malava, the Melech first, like a Malava Malcha. It's escorting Shabbat out. It's really what it is. We're Malava the Melech out, and then Yotzim Likroti Porkos. We make Havdalah first to say goodbye to Shabbat, and then we make Kiddush to welcome Shabbat, right? It's the Mashal the Melech Shi Shabbat is Yotze, Shabbat is leaving. But Yom Tov, the Porkos is Nichnas, it's entering. Melalvin, Melavin et Hamelech, we escort the king away. Then we make Kiddush to welcome Yom Tov. He says, we should escort the king away, with Shabbat, and then and escort the, the Porkos in, that's Yom Tov. He says, we should make Havdalah first, say goodbye to Shabbat, and then Kiddush to welcome Yom Tov. So he's not answering this with a halakhic argument. He's answering just this is how people do stuff, right? This is how you do it. If the king is leaving, you escort the king first by welcoming the Iporkos in the presence of the king. It's going to insult them. So you escort the king out first, give them their honor, their kavod, and then you welcome the Iporkos, who also deserves kavod, but not the same as the Melech. You don't want to start honoring somebody else in front of the one that's in charge. It'll be a little bit insulting, a little bit of bizarre and embarrassment to their kavod. He says to make Havdalah first to escort Shabbat out and then make Kiddush to welcome Yom Tov in. That's the opinion, the Jeshita of Shmuel. Now, let's get a few words down for Rav. This is going to come from the Rash Bam. He says, Savrle, he thinks Adifa is better, Kodem is before, in order, before. Mechsi, we saw that before, looks like Masoy, a burden. We saw that before also. And Tadir, we're going to see that. Tadir is more common. The other term you should have is Inami. I didn't write it here. You can take it down. Is Aleph Yud space Nun Mem Yud. It means alternatively. He's going to give two possible answers. So, Rav Amar, Yakna. This is a little bit long. There's really two parts of it. We'll, we'll see that in a second. Savrlei, Kedusha Tayom Adifa Mehavdala. In this section, it's going to get a little confusing. We'll see in a second. Kedusha Tayom is the Kedusha of of Shavam, of Yom Tov, right? To make Kedush is more is just better, a more better. It's better than Havdala, right? You're welcoming Yom Tov. You're excited about it. You don't want Shabbos to leave necessarily, but you're excited about Yom Tov. So announcing that it's Kiddush, that Yom Tov, making Kiddush, is better than Havdalah. Kiddush at Hayom, Adifa me Havdalah. Just better. It's more important. You're welcoming something versus letting it go. That's the first way of explaining it. Kiddush at Hayom, Adifa me Havdalah. Kiddush is better. That's why you want to make it first. Right? More exciting, right? People make a big deal about Kiddush. They make a Kiddush for a bar mitzvah. They don't make a Havdalah for a bar mitzvah, although we could, right? Inami, alternatively, a whole new way of explaining this now. Here, Kiddush HaTayom means Shabbat, right? It's a little bit hard. It's the same phrase, meaning something different. Merci, it looks like. 
Masoy, a burden. Remember that phrase? We'll take a look in a second. Where? Ki mavdil bereisha. When you make havdala first. Mechsi da have a lie. Kedusha da yom ka masoy. It looks like Kedusha da yom is a masoy. It looks like Shabbos is a burden to him. Right? It looks like he's just trying to get rid of Shabbos. Mavdil ha mavdil ben kodesh. Finally, we're done with it. We actually say mavdil ben kodesh to kodesh. Because the other is also kodesh. It looks like he's finally done with Shabbos. We can wait for Shabbos to end. Now we can get on Yom Tov. It's a lot better. That's not true, right? Shabbat is the holiest day of the year, right? He agrees on that point. You don't want to just rush, get rid of Shabbos before making Yom Tov, Kiddush. You want to savor Shabbos and enjoy Shabbos. So you make Kiddush first, and then you wait to say goodbye to Shabbos as long as you can. Kimav de Beresha. If you make Havdalah first, it looks like the Kedusha Tayom of Shabbos is a Masoy. It looks like it's a burden. Oh, man, I have to deal with Shabbos again, right? So he spins them around, right? He says, don't want to have Yom Tov first, or your Shabbos first, because then it looks like you're getting rid of Shabbos and you can't wait for Yom Tov, which might be true. You're excited about Yom Tov, which is why you're doing that first. But don't try to get rid of Shabbos, right? Don't make it mechsi alive kamasoi. Don't make it look like it's a burden. So you hold off on Havdalah and make Kiddush first. Now, last point here. He says, Lefichak, yayin kodim le Kiddush, kabet hilel. This is referring to a sugi in Brachot. I'm not going to look at that sugi in depth, but he says that tadir v'she'eno tadir, tadir kodem. Right? Anytime you have two things that are common, right? Tadir ve'eno tadir, tadir kodem. When you have something that's more common, something that's less common, the more common thing comes first. So in this case, Tadir is Brepir Gafen. You made Brepir Gafen for Shabbos and Yom Tov and a bris and a pigeon and and because you wanted to drink some grape juice on a random Thursday night and for a bat mitzvah and for a bar mitzvah and an upsharon and whatever else you do it for. It's all the time. Kiddush and Avdal are both liars. The first thing that's going to come up is Kiddush is yayin, right? Bashar motze Shabbatot. Just like regular Shabbos, the regular order, Shaner Kodem La Havdala. It says when you're coming here now. Tadir Tadir Kodem means whatever is more common is going to come first. The Brapier Gafen comes first, according to both of them actually. Then he says you don't want it to look like a Masoy, so you don't say Havdala next, you say Kiddush next. Then, after that's all done, you do have to say Havdalah, so you make Havdalah, so goodbye to Shabbat. Now, this Maxi Aleha Kamasoi, where have we seen that phrase before, right? Do you remember? In the Rashbam, when we're talking about mitzvot chavi, making mitzvot Chavilot Chavilot, the Maxi Aleha Kamasoi, right? We don't want it to look like a Maxi, we don't want it to look like we're a burden by mitzvot. So we see this coming up in more than one place. We schedule, we arrange the way we do mitzvot to make sure it doesn't look like it's a ma'asoy, doesn't look like it's a burden. We want to really savor the mitzvah of Shabbat. We want to savor the mitzvah of Yom Tov. We want to savor whatever mitzvah we're making on a coast. Whatever it is we're doing, we want it to look like we're enjoying it. We should really enjoy it, right? We want to get to the point where we really are enjoying it. We certainly don't want it to look like we're just trying to get rid of it. Now, we're going to see later this week, how do we apply that to our lives? There's a place where it comes up in halacha all the time, not just on Yom Tov and Shabbat and when Yom Tov falls on Shabbat, Shabbat. And we're going to be able to apply this idea to our lives on a regular basis. We'll see that next time. All right. Looking forward to seeing you guys in class.